Hi everyone, Kalen here from Red Arc Electronics. Today I'm going to show you how to easily and safely install your Manager 30 battery management system. Just a quick note, if you don't feel comfortable installing it on your own, we have a long list of installers we'd be happy to recommend so you can get your install done professionally. If you're ready for a DIY, let's have a look at the components we have here. For this install, you will need the following tools and parts. Cable cutters, wire strippers, flat blade screwdriver, six gauge or six BNS cable, zero or two gauge or BNS cable, cable lugs, 60 amp midi fuses with holders, screws and bolts to mount, zip ties and heat shrink for neatness, and Anderson plugs would be an optional for external inputs. We always recommend installing the Manager 30 in the canopy or at the rear of the vehicle or directly in the trailer, never under the bonnet. Today, we'll do this install on a board for simplicity and so you can see clearly where everything is laid out. But this would also work if you're mounting the system in a cabinet or anywhere in the vehicle or camper. First off, we're gonna start with the main charging assembly. This unit is the brains of the system. The Manager 30 has three inputs to charge your 12 volt dual battery system. Mains AC voltage, DC from the vehicle, 12 or 24 volts, and a solar input. On one end of the Manager 30, we have our AC mains input connector. This is for when you're at a powered site or while in storage at home. On the opposite end, we've got three connectors. First off, we have the green six-way connector. This is where you're gonna make your connections from your vehicle, solar, and to your auxiliary batteries. We also have two CAN connections for communicating with the remote monitor and the battery sensor. We will start with terminal one. So if you're looking face on with the writing in the correct orientation, it's the far left terminal. Terminal one is the second battery output terminal. This positive connection goes through a 60 amp MIDI fuse to your secondary battery. The second terminal of this green connector is the load disconnect terminal. The load disconnect terminal has an earth output to control a relay or solenoid. You can use this to automatically disconnect loads based on either your second battery state of charge or the battery voltage. Once the battery has reached the set state of charge or voltage, it will remove the earth output, deactivating the relay or solenoid and removing battery power from any load connected. Next up, the third terminal is your ground connection. Now most importantly with this system, it reads all of the current to and from your auxiliary battery. So we'll briefly leave the green connector and take a look at one of the other components in the box. The battery sensor here is responsible for measuring any current going to or from your battery. It has two main terminals and two cables from a circuit on top. The terminals on either end are labelled B-neg for your battery negative connection and the other is labelled ground. What we need to do is connect the negative of your secondary battery terminal to the B-neg side of the battery sensor. Make sure the cable size is suitably rated for the total combined current of all of your loads. Every other ground from a load or input, including the Manager 30 itself, needs to be grounded to the GND side. For example, if you have an LED light, the positive is going to be through a fused circuit from your auxiliary battery, and the negative of that LED comes back to this GND, or common ground side of this sensor. A method often used for wiring a common ground would be to have a connection between the GND side of the sensor to your chassis ground. You can then connect the LED, for example, to the chassis ground so that the cable does not need to be run all the way back to the sensor. Headed back to the green connector of the Manager 30, Terminal 3 needs to be wired to the GND side of the battery sensor or our common ground at the chassis so the charge current can be measured. Now on top of the sensor, there is a black box with two cables. One, as you see here, has a red over-molded terminal. This goes to the auxiliary battery positive terminal. This terminal contains a sensor that is responsible for measuring battery voltage and also battery temperature for charging compensation. 
The other cable has an RJ45 connector. This is plugged into one of the ports on the main charging unit. Next, terminal 4 of the green connector is the ignition input. Some more modern vehicles have smart alternators, also referred to as low voltage or variable voltage alternators. These alternators don't provide a constant voltage above the charger's DC turn on thresholds of 13.2 volts. This means the charger will not start taking power from the vehicle until it sees 13.2 volts or more and stop taking power after it drops below 12.7 volts. This prevents the Manager 30 from draining your vehicle's battery. If you have a modern vehicle with one of these alternators, you may need to run an ignition switched positive signal to Terminal 4. Just check with your local dealership if you are unsure. Then in the Manager 30 menu, which can be accessed via the display, you can choose your DC input trigger to be an ignition trigger rather than the standard 12 volt or automatic input. Next up, Terminal 5. This is your solar positive input. This input is used to connect an unregulated solar panel or array to the Manager 30. This input does not have a restriction on the size of the array, only that the open circuit voltage cannot exceed 32 volts. Next up, pin 6. This is your DC vehicle input. It's a fuse connection from the vehicle's battery through a 50 amp MIDI fuse using 6 gauge or 6 BNS cable as a minimum. This goes into Terminal 6 to take care of the DC to DC charging. DC to DC charging allows a different type of 12 volt battery than the vehicle battery to be used as an auxiliary. It can also assist with overcoming voltage drop. For example, the Manager 30 is capable of accepting a low 12 volt input from a modern smart alternator and boost this to the voltage required by your auxiliary battery. Finally, it is time to mount and connect the remote monitor. As there are two different display options, the mounting will vary, but the wiring connection will remain the same. The remote monitors can be mounted up to eight feet or two and a half meters away from the charger with the cable supplied using the provided template as a guide. Once you have mounted the monitor, simply run the supplied cable back to the remaining RJ45 port on the main charging assembly. Once all your connections have been made, you will need to program the battery management system, providing time and date, vehicle input information, and your auxiliary battery information. You can also set your battery alarms and automatic load disconnect feature in the settings, which are explained in detail in the product user manual. When the Manager 30 is started for the first time, the unit will need to calculate what it deems to be fully charged. For this reason, the first charge cycle will not give an indication of the state of charge and will instead display either a calculating message or if using the red vision display, the battery information will be blank. Once the battery is deemed to be fully charged, this display will change to 100%. The battery management system will then track the battery state of charge based on the input and output currents. Thank you for watching our install today. And as always, if you need tech support or have any questions, you can call our team based here in Australia on the numbers below.